Imagine standing in the middle of a desert, hot wind, blinding sand, a place you'd expect to be empty and lifeless. But here, something completely unexpected has appeared. In the middle of Inner Mongolia's Kabuki Desert, there's a ranch unlike any other. It houses 8,000 dairy cows and runs on over 130 automated milking robots. Together, they produce around 200 tons of fresh milk every single day. That's enough milk to give almost a glass to every resident of San Francisco in one day. This isn't Europe. It's not the Middle East. This is China, where one of the harshest deserts on Earth has been turned into a high-tech oasis of agriculture. But the question is, why? Why raise cows in one of the most extreme environments possible? And how do they keep them alive in 50-degree heat, where water is scarce and grass barely grows? China is home to about 1.4 billion people. With that many mouths to feed, even a small change in eating habits can create a huge wave of demand. And in the last 20 years, milk has gone from a rare drink to an everyday staple in many Chinese households. In 2024, China produced about 40.8 million tons of milk. That sounds massive, but it still wasn't enough. To fill the gap, the country imported another 2.6 million tons of milk and dairy products, spending more than 10 billion US dollars. To put that in perspective, that's about the same cost as buying over 120 brand new F-35 fighter jets in just one year. Relying on imports at that scale isn't just expensive, it's risky. Global prices swing. Shipping routes can be disrupted. And depending too much on foreign milk leaves China vulnerable to supply shocks. So the government made a clear decision. Produce more milk at home no matter how hard it is. But here's the challenge. Raising cows takes huge amounts of land and grass. Traditional farming areas were already stretched thin. So researchers began asking themselves, could there be another way? Could cows survive where nobody expected them to? Like in the desert? For thousands of years, deserts like the Kabuki were home to one animal above all others, the camel. Perfectly built for the heat, long treks without water and sparse vegetation. But cows? Cows are the opposite. They need lots of water, steady temperatures, and endless amounts of food. On paper, bringing cows into a desert makes as much sense as trying to grow bananas on an iceberg. So when Chinese engineers and agricultural experts first suggested putting a dairy farm here, many thought it was, well, a little insane. People asked, why waste millions of dollars building barns in the sand? Why not just import more milk instead? But the idea wasn't random. It was part of a bigger vision. China had already been investing heavily in transforming deserts, planting trees, building solar farms, and reclaiming land. If they could stop sand from spreading and even grow crops in certain areas, why not push the boundary further? Why not try cows? It was a gamble a bold bet against nature. And to pull it off, they needed more than just determination. They needed cutting edge technology. To make cows survive in a desert, China couldn't just copy normal farms. They had to re-engineer the entire system from the ground up. The result looks less like a traditional ranch and more like a factory crossed with a space station. The barns are climate controlled. Cooling fans and water mist systems keep temperatures steady, so the cows don't collapse in 45 degree heat. Each cow wears a sensor that tracks its health, milk yield, and even stress levels, kind of like a Fitbit for cattle. If something's wrong, the system alerts workers instantly. And the milking itself, done by robots. Over 130 robotic stations work around the clock, allowing cows to walk in when they're ready. No human hands are needed and everything is recorded digitally. This reduces labor, cuts down stress for the animals, and keeps hygiene at a level you'd normally see in a pharmaceutical lab. Powering this operation is another secret weapon solar energy. The Kabuki Desert is one of the sunniest places in northern China, and nearby solar bases generate billions of kilowatt hours every year. That electricity doesn't just run the milking machines. It powers refrigerators, water pumps, and automated feeding lines. In other words, the sun itself is keeping the cows alive but technology alone isn't enough. Feeding thousands of cows in a desert sounds impossible at first. Cows don't just sip water and graze a little grass, they consume a massive diet. A single dairy cow can drink up to 150 liters of water a day and eat more than 40 kilograms of feed. Multiply that by 8,000 cows and you're looking at demand on the scale of a small city. So how did they solve it? 
The answer came from two fronts, crops and logistics. In nearby reclaimed land, farmers began growing alfalfa and silage corn, using modern irrigation systems like drip lines that deliver water directly to the roots. These green patches act as the cow's buffet table, proving that with the right water management, even desert soil can support feed crops. But the desert farm doesn't rely only on local fields. Trains and trucks bring in extra feed from other provinces, ensuring supply never runs dry. Think of it as a giant supply chain, where the desert farm is just one hub in a nationwide food network. And water? That was another major hurdle. Engineers tapped into carefully managed groundwater and set up recycling systems inside the barns. Wastewater from cleaning is filtered and reused. Even cow manure is processed into fertilizer, turning what would be pollution into something valuable for growing more crops. In short, they built a closed loop system. Crops feed cows. Cows produce waste. Waste helps grow more crops. So, after all the investment, does it actually pay off? The numbers say yes. This desert dairy now produces about 200 tons of fresh milk every single day. That's 200,000 liters, enough for nearly a million people to enjoy a glass daily. For a country like China, with a growing middle class and surging demand for fresh dairy, that's a big win. And it's not just about raw volume. By using automation, efficiency shoots up. Robotic milking means fewer workers are needed and every cow's performance is tracked. That data allows farmers to spot problems early and maximize output. In fact, some reports show milk yields here rival those of top farms in the US or Europe, despite being in the middle of a desert. Of course, the costs are massive. Building climate-controlled barns, installing robotic systems, and shipping in feed isn't cheap. Estimates put construction in the hundreds of millions of dollars. But the payoff is long-term. Once built, the system runs with lower labor costs, renewable power from the sun, and recycled resources. It's designed not just for profit, but for food security, making sure China isn't too dependent on foreign milk imports. So yes, the milk is flowing. But the story isn't just about cows and numbers. This project reveals something deeper, a glimpse into China's larger desert strategy. This dairy farm isn't just about milk. It's a piece of a much bigger puzzle. China's strategy to turn deserts from dead zones into engines of growth. The Kubuki Desert, once called one of Asia's devil deserts, is now being reshaped with green corridors, solar farms, and yes, cows. China has two reasons for doing this. First, food security. The country's population of 1.4 billion means food demand is enormous. By building farms in the desert, China reduces its reliance on imported milk and dairy products. Second, desert control. Sandstorms from places like Kabuki and the Gobi used to sweep into Beijing and choke the skies. By planting crops and building farms, China literally anchors the sand, reducing erosion and making the environment more livable. It's part of what China calls the ecological economy, projects that don't just make money, but also heal damaged land. Think of it like using the desert against itself. Cows fertilize the soil, crops hold the dunes in place, solar panels generate power, and everything ties back into the loop. And the symbolism is powerful. What used to be empty wasteland is now producing food for millions. It shows the world that with enough money, tech, and planning, even the harshest environments can be reshaped into productive land. Still, not everyone is convinced. The big question remains, can this model really last in the long run, or is it an expensive illusion built on fragile foundations? Not everyone sees this desert dairy as a miracle. Critics warn that projects like this are expensive experiments that could backfire if not carefully managed. First, the cost. Building high-tech barns and maintaining thousands of cows in an arid zone requires billions of yuan in upfront investment. While big corporations or state-backed companies can handle that, smaller farmers can't. Some experts argue that this model isn't scalable. It works in one desert, but can't be copied everywhere. Second, water. Even with recycling systems, the farm still consumes huge amounts of groundwater. And unlike grasslands, Deserts don't naturally recharge water easily. Some ecologists fear that pumping too much water could dry up underground reserves, creating a new environmental crisis down the line. Third, feed imports. While alfalfa is grown locally, a large share still comes from other provinces, and even from abroad. That means the desert dairy isn't truly self-sufficient. It's more like moving the environmental burden somewhere else. And finally, the climate factor. 
Cows are major methane emitters, and placing thousands of them in one location adds to greenhouse gas challenges. For a project that's partly sold as green, this raises uncomfortable questions. So while the desert dairy looks futuristic and impressive, it sits on a delicate balance between solving immediate food needs and creating long-term risks. Which leads us to the final question. What does this experiment really mean for the future of farming? This dairy farm in the desert is more than a local project. It's a test case for the future of farming on a warming planet. Around the world, fertile land is shrinking. Climate change, urban expansion, and soil degradation mean traditional farms can't keep up with rising demand. So if you can make cows thrive in one of the harshest environments on Earth, you're proving it's possible almost anywhere. Think about it. Deserts cover about one-third of Earth's land surface. That's space humanity has mostly ignored for food production. Turning even a fraction of that into productive zones could change the global food equation. It won't solve every problem, but it shows how technology, investment, and determination can bend nature's limits. At the same time, it's a reminder of the trade-offs. Farming in extreme places demands huge resources. It raises tough questions. Should we pour billions into reshaping deserts, or should we focus more on reducing waste and improving efficiency in fertile regions? Is this the future of farming or just a showcase of what's possible with money and political will? Either way, China's desert dairy has already changed the conversation. It shows that the line between what is farmable and what isn't is no longer fixed. With enough innovation, even the world's most unforgiving landscapes can be turned into food factories. Critics worry about water use, feed imports, and environmental stress. But the farm's operators argue they've built safeguards to keep the balance. First, water. The dairy isn't pumping endlessly from underground. It draws controlled allocations from the Yellow River, amounts set by regional water authorities. Every drop is tracked, recycled, and reused. Wastewater from the barns is treated and turned back into irrigation for alfalfa fields. Second, waste. Instead of dumping cow manure, it's collected, fermented into biogas for electricity, and processed into fertilizer that actually helps dessert soil regain nutrients. Third, the environment itself is monitored like a patient. Sensors track soil moisture, vegetation growth, and groundwater levels in real time. Officials say the results speak for themselves. Vegetation in the farm zone has multiplied fivefold in just a few years. So while the risks are real, defenders argue the desert dairy isn't reckless. It's a carefully managed experiment, proving that even fragile land can be farmed responsibly. But is this truly a sustainable model or just a showcase of what's possible when cost is no object? China may be leading this desert dairy experiment, but the world is watching closely and the reactions couldn't be more divided. Some see it as groundbreaking. Governments in the Middle East, like Saudi Arabia and the UAE, have already invested heavily in desert agriculture. For them, China's success is proof that extreme environments don't have to stay barren. If China can raise cows in the desert, why not sheep in Oman or large-scale poultry in Nevada's drylands? But not everyone is convinced. Environmental groups argue that throwing technology and money at deserts could distract from fixing problems in fertile regions like food waste, soil degradation, and inefficient farming methods. To them, desert farming is more spectacle than solution. The economic world is also paying attention. Global dairy markets are crowded. Europe, New Zealand, and the US have long dominated. A mega farm in China's desert signals that Beijing is serious about cutting imports and even challenging exporters on price and scale. So beyond the sand and steel barns, this project is shaping debates about the future. Should nations bend nature to produce food anywhere, or focus on making the most of the land they already have? The answer may redefine how the world feeds itself in the decades ahead. A few years ago, the idea of raising tens of thousands of cows in the middle of China's desert sounded like science fiction, or even madness. Today, it's a living, breathing reality. But the real question is, what does it mean? On one hand, it shows the sheer scale of human ambition. If you can turn a desert into a milk factory, what else is possible? Could deserts power not just food, but energy, industry, even new cities? China's experiment pushes us to imagine a world where geography is no longer destiny. On the other hand, it forces us to ask hard questions. At what cost do we bend nature to our will? Is this a bold solution to food security or a fragile bubble propped up by massive resources? Will the desert stay green if subsidies dry up or if water runs short? 
The desert dairy isn't just about milk. It's about humanity's fight to adapt in a century defined by climate change, resource pressure, and exploding populations. For China, it's a statement of power and independence. For the rest of the world, it's a preview of the choices every nation may soon face. So, is this the future of farming or an ambitious gamble that time will test? Either way, one thing is certain. The desert, once seen as dead land, has become the front line of humanity's most daring experiments. If you found this story eye-opening, hit like, share it with a friend, and subscribe for more deep dives into how our world is changing.